We begin our report with a guilty verdict in the case against members of the far-right extremist group Proud Boys. On the most serious charge of seditious conspiracy, a jury found four out of the five defendants guilty for their role in the attack on the Capitol. That includes the group's former leader, Enrique Tario. A fifth Proud Boy was convicted on other felonies. The verdict is a major victory for the Justice Department as it prosecutes those who took part in the violence at our nation's capital more than two years ago. CBS News' Scott McFarlane reports from Washington. It was one of the darkest days in American history. And federal prosecutors cast the five Proud Boys as leaders of the mob responsible, assembling a fighting force of 100 members that considered themselves Donald Trump's army. And we fight. We fight like hell. Marching straight to the Capitol that morning as then President Trump was speaking, some of them the first to break through police barricades. January 6th will be a day in infamy. The jury convicted four of the five, including former one time leader Enrique Tario, of seditious conspiracy, plotting to overthrow the government and several other charges. The fifth, Dominic Pozzola, who used a police riot shield to smash a Capitol window and lead rioters inside, was convicted of obstructing an official proceeding. I promised that the Justice Department would do everything in its power to hold accountable those responsible for the heinous attack. Tario, a one-time aide to Trump ally Roger Stone, was found guilty even though he wasn't even in Washington on the 6th, directing his colleagues remotely from a Baltimore hotel. That night, he messaged them, make no mistake, we did this. Legal experts say Tario's conviction in particular will impact special counsel Jack Smith's probe into Donald Trump. It also will serve to empower the special counsel as he further investigates and potentially indicts others who may be responsible for the other schemes to overthrow the peaceful transfer of power in the 2020 presidential election. During the trial, prosecutors linked the Proud Boys to former President Trump, playing this clip from a 2020 presidential debate. Right Proud Boys, election. stand back and stand by. That moment changed my life forever. Proud Boy Jeremy Bertino became a star witness for the prosecutors, testifying the group wanted an all-out revolution and to stop the transfer of power. I think these guys got what they deserved. Uh, you lead an attempted coup and you go to jail. And Scott McFarlane joins me now. Uh, Scott, you mentioned in your piece how this verdict could help the special counsel's probe. But what about the other January 6th cases? Does this help uh, the DOJ in those? They're amassing so much leverage, John, at the Department of Justice. To be clear, as of tonight, they have secured guilty verdicts in every single January 6th case to go to a trial by jury. And with hundreds more arrests expected, hundreds more cases expected, yeah, this helps them secure leverage maybe to get plea agreements with some of those defendants to prepare for trial. They have amassed immense amounts of leverage. And it's worth keeping in mind, special counsel Jack Smith is still working and could bring charges of his own. And they're also becoming sort of experts in how to make the case. I mean, they're making it over and over again with some particularities, but they're getting a lot of rounds in the batting cage here in terms of sharpening their arguments. The attorney general has called this one of the largest investigations in the country's history. You followed this so closely. Can you put the scope in context and also how many convictions are in one way or another have there been? I think the numbers tell the story about the size and the magnitude of these cases. There have been more than 1,000 people charged. Very soon we will hear about trial dates that go into 2024, the year of the next presidential election. About 600 or so cases have closed through plea agreements and through trials and convictions, but there will be hundreds more cases, potentially 1,000 more cases. Just the enormity of the numbers tells you why this is a historic case and a historic prosecution. And yeah, it's just different. The videos of an attack on the Capitol, different than any other criminal case brought by the Department of Justice. And the images and sounds you hear and see in court stand out. This is just one of a kind. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of cases and somehow Scott McFarland seems to have them all in his head. Scott McFarland in Washington. Thank you, Scott.